speak to Kamisa Kamara, political analyst with the pro-democracy think tank, the National Endowment for Democracy. She focuses on West and Central Africa, joins us now from Washington, D.C., via Skype. Thanks very much for speaking to us. So we appear to have a situation where the mutinying soldiers have opened fire on the compound where the defense minister uh, was housed, along with a delegation. What is the significance of this, given that it comes shortly after the president had indicated there'd been some success in negotiations with those soldiers? I think it just shows that the situation is pretty unpredictable. We don't really know what is going, uh, going to happen or what is going on. Uh, the official word is that these soldiers are former rebels who fought along uh, Alassane Ouattara to make sure that he gets elected and that he uh, rises to power uh, back in 2010. And what we're seeing now is that these soldiers are coming out saying, we need more money, uh, we need to be promoted uh, quicker. Uh, but it looks like the Minister of Defense hasn't really come out to say a confused situation right now. Uh, from what we know, and it's very difficult, um, you know, for you to give us your assess assessment given where you are, but uh, even though they've opened fire on this compound, is the ultimate aim to avoid any kind of escalating violence or bloodshed? Is this a tactic to, well, put a great deal of pressure on uh, the defense minister? Definitely. It is, it is a, a, a definitely pressure uh, on the minister. What I, what I can also uh, tell you is that it is quite unprecedented that uh, a mutiny uh, just spreads uh, across the country. It's not the first one that, that Cote d'Ivoire has known recently. Uh, back in 2011, there was one, but it was uh, shorter. Um, it was um, located in, in a very uh, small town, and now we're seeing it across the country. So it's quite worrying, and we don't really know where it's going to go. As you say, there is a, a recent history of these types of revolts taking place in 2000. We've had a number of them over the past few years in 2008, 2009. Is there something different about these developments playing out right now? I think that there have been uh, some steps that President Alassane Ouattara has taken recently that were uh, portrayed as positive for the country, uh, including the constitutional revision process. And I think that those ex-rebels who are now uh, basically rising against, against the central government might be asking for dividends uh, from Ouattara's uh, presidency and they're, that they're not, they're not getting them as fast as they, they would want to. So it's looks like uh, personal uh, 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 quests from uh, those uh, soldiers, and they might be directed at President Alassane Ouattara. Given that fighting has broken out, or I should say uh, that they are shooting at the compound where you have the defense minister, and this, uh, while negotiations have been taking place to put an end to this revolt, can we be absolutely sure that pay and living conditions are the, the ultimate goal, or could there be something else going on, something perhaps uh, deeper than what the soldiers' stated demands have been? I think there is definitely something deeper. The fact that those uh, um, mutinies are all over the country, they're spread across the country, especially in big cities like Boaké, which was the center of the rebellion uh, back in 2010 and 2011, and even before that, I think that is an indication that there is something going on there, uh, that soldiers are basically directing their requests uh, towards Alassane Ouattara, um, whom they, they helped to get elected. They might be asking for more than what we're seeing, um, and President Alassane Ouattara might have to uh, really um, uh, try and, and improve his relationships with, the, with that military that, that has definitely helped him. Uh, but those rebels, again, uh, who are now integrated in the military, did not receive formal uh, military training, and that's, I think, important to, to know that. Um, so now they're integrated in, in the formal army, um, and they want to be part of a process where they get the dividends of, of what they fought for. So it's it definitely there's something more than, than what we're seeing. How cohesive a force is the military? Are they essentially functioning and acting as one, or could there be splinter groups within the force? There is definitely splinter groups uh, within the army, and, and an indication of that is that there is no uh, formal... Uh, official spokesperson of the army which came, who came out and said, I am the spokesperson of the army, and I was delegated by uh, my uh, brothers to come in and speak to you in their name. So there definitely might be some splinter groups. Again, when 
whenever the army comes out against a, a government like this, especially throughout the country, things could go really bad. And, and these developments are definitely worrying for the country. What do you mean things could go really bad? What is the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario, I mean, Cote d'Ivoire came out of a civil, civil war not long ago, less than 10 years ago. So Cote d'Ivoire is definitely a fertile country. Uh, you can't really say that democracy is on the right path, that everything is, is just fine. I mean, there, ha there have been some grievances of, of population. The national reconciliation process since the Civil War hasn't gone really far. Um, they have not made uh, progress, uh, uh, or timid progress, I would say, since, since uh, 2011. Um, so the worst case scenario could be the military wanting to remove President Alassane Ouattara from his presidency seat. It's just all up to speculations right now. Um, but it's never a good thing when the military organizes themselves and, and come out um, as strongly and across the country against a government. We know that the, those mutinying soldiers are one-time allies of the president. Just remind us what went wrong in their relationship. So what, what I'm saying is that, um, so they did help, as rebels, they did help President Alassane Ouattara uh, get elected. Uh, most of them are from the northern part of the country, which is president, predominantly Muslim. Uh, they did help Alassane Ouattara get elected. After he got elected, he had made some promises to the military, which he wasn't able to, to keep, uh, including higher salaries, basically, uh, promotions within the army, the houses that the, the military are now um, demanding. So there might have been some promises there that were not kept. Um, and uh, Alassane Ouattara hasn't really um, worked with the military to improve the, the dialogue process and, and try and figure out what their claims were. So I think that this is now the explosion or um, the military coming out saying, well, look, you promised this and that to us. You were elected. We got you there. And you're not giving us what we deserve. So is it just that he needs to deliver on better pay and, and living conditions, or has the relationship deteriorated to such an extent that it will take something much more substantial to repair this? So I think that the official claims that the military are, are currently making are definitely uh, a financial, uh, financial uh, uh, claims. And I think definitely those have to be addressed ASAP, and they, they might be the easier uh, that need to be addressed. But there are definitely some, some dialogue that needs to, to, to go on between the Minister of Defense and the president, I have no idea what those discussions uh, will entail. Uh, but again, I am pretty much sure that there is more than what we're seeing on the news currently. It's more than, than uh, just financial claims. Thank you very much, Commissioner Kamara. If you can hang around, we would love to talk to you some more uh, as we watch these developments unfold. Sure. Let's now speak to our correspondent, Amal.